So, Michelle, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, go ahead. It's your time now. Thank you, Amal. Please, go ahead. So, um, this testimony is in relation to my daughter. Um, she is in her 20s. It's actually her birthday today. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. yeah, praise God. Happy birthday to her. So, she... Um, is in her 20s and for the last 10 years she has suffered with endometriosis. Um, she, it's something that has got worse over the years um, instead of better and I, it has no known cause and no known cure. Um, you can try and treat it for pain or treat it for infertility. Um, she's, over the years she's taken um, pain, prescribed pain relief panston for about six years and she's also been on the pill for a couple of years on and off um, and this year she had gone to her GP she has had scans and, and tests done and um, the last option her GP was offering her was to um, have the marina coil inserted um, so because of the level of pain she had decided that this was the, her, her only option so she had to she had an appointment arranged for the 21st of October. Um, she, from, let's we'll say, September time. So she had heard of Amal and um, she knew that I tuned in regularly to the teachings and I tried to share it with her. And um, there was something that had happened in her life that had caused her a certain level of anxiety and upset and trauma and a man had said to me before that he would like to meet her and uh, to speak with her so that had been going on for some time and eventually um at the at the end of september it was actually the third of october she came to me and she, she was we were talking about faith and things like that and she really it was strongly wanted to come and meet a man that day that night so at the time the the prayer meeting was happening in Glenmire on the Saturday nights um, uh, with social distancing and that, and you had to book your place. So we booked our place, the two of us, and we, we travelled down to the meeting and we met with Amel afterwards. So this was the first time she met him in person. Um, and so Amel met with her after the meeting and um, spoke to her about the issue that he was aware of to do with the hurt that she had suffered. And he, the first prayer he got her to say was, thank you, Jesus, for blessing the particular person. So she did that several times. And as she did that, after that, he said to her, um, do you have painful periods? And so she was taken aback and she didn't know how to react. But she said, um, did my mother tell you that? And he said, no, that is all. So anyway, um, she did, she said she did, and that she had endometriosis. And Amal said to her that, well, the Lord is healing that tonight for you. So he got her to say a number of prayers. And one of them is, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. My God himself has anointed me. He has filled me with his love and set me completely free. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I am the body of Christ. Satan, sickness and sin have no power over me anymore. Um. Do you want to stop me, man? Yeah, no, no, Michelle. One thing uh, before that. What scripture was involved? Of course, very important thing as we were discussing. There yes. were offense. There were hurt. Uh, yes. resentment in her heart. But when she chose to bless those people who were offended yes. very badly in her life. Yes. On the basis of Luke chapter 6, verse number 28. Mm -hmm. The healing did not come because we prayed. She was standing still in the word. When the word was given, she was able to reciprocate the same. Very important. Yes, she was able to forgive. She's able to bless those people who yes. have done pretty yes. nasty things in her life. Put it that yes, way. that's right. And then when this endo, when she has this, when she told me this, she has this endometriosis. As a nurse, I'd like to tell another one thing is, it's one of the very painful time for a woman yes and the cells which are lining the uterus have invaded the fallopian tube 
and the ovaries. Am I right? That's right. So the scripture being used for the healing of this endometriosis in this beautiful sister of mine is Genesis chapter 1, verse number 2, two and, and three. 3. That's the most important one. Genesis yes. chapter 1, verse number 2 and 3. It says clearly, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. Three attributes when the earth was, what is that attributes? It was formless, formless, void, and darkness. And then Lord, God said, let that be light and there was light. This is the basic scripture being used nowadays. You can take it to anybody, my dear brothers and sisters. This is the trump card. When the earth was void, null, and darkness. When it is, when it is, when you say it's void and null, that means everything is haphazard. Everything is chaotic. There is no orderliness. Everything is unorganized. Am I right in my English? Yes. Yes, perfect. So everything which was unorganized. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Same thing. Everything which was unorganized, thank you, Holy Spirit. Everything which was unorganized came into organization as God the Father began to speak day after day. Is that right? Yes. And the sixth day, everything was perfect. Am I right? Yes. That's right. Yes. So from a void, null, and dark situations, he made beautiful, organized pattern of functioning of this earth. So yes. if your cells, which are chaotic, which are making the havoc in the fallopian tube and in the ovaries, can also be brought under orderliness by speaking the word of God, the truth, again and again. Does it make sense? Yeah. Yes. So this is the application. This is how the healing my sister got. That's right. It was unorderly. Where the cells is orderly, in, is, is, it, is it a proper order for these cells to invade fallopian tube and ovaries? No. no. It should remain only in the uterus. So this is an unorderly nature of the cells invading. So I, we are speaking in the name of Jesus, this unorderly chaotic nature of the cells be brought back into orderliness. That means get back to the only place where God has made you to be. Let there be light. Amen. And now tell me, just uh, now tell me, Michelle. So you gave her certain prayers to say um, after claiming what you what you because you were inspired by the Holy Spirit the whole way through because you didn't know that she had endometriosis. She had no intention of telling you that she had endometriosis. Um, but the, the Holy Spirit inspired you on that and inspired you with that word as well in scripture. So you gave her a prayer to say, um, which uh, she said, um, and she firmly believed in her heart that she was healed. I firmly believed that I was there the same night and we both firmly believed she was healed. And she kept saying the prayers. Now, the next day she did have a lot of, she did have pain and she was doubting a little bit, but you re-established the prayer with her and um, basically um, the appointment with the G the two things, the appointment with the GP, she ended up canceling it because her cycle changed and she didn't get her period when she should have. However, at the end of October, when she did get her period, she had practically no pain. Two Panadol is all that she had to take on the first day and she had no pain and her bloating was gone. And praise God, she's. It was evidence. It was a witness for her, for her healing. Praise the God. Same, the same thing. The following month, she's had very little pain. A little normal pain, I suppose, is what you'd say. It's not completely gone, but it's ninety nine percent gone, and she can live a normal life now without the severity of the pain, which was, it was, extremely harsh pain for her. So. 
Praise God. But there's a couple of things. The Holy Spirit inspired her to insist to go down that night, the 3rd of October, because the following week we were put back into lockdown and the meetings were back on online. And she wouldn't have met you in person and she'd have gone ahead and she'd have got the coil inserted. Thing is, Praise God uh, for all of that. Michelle, very simple, very simple. The Holy Spirit, as the word was there, the Holy Spirit is always willing. She made a choice that day to come. She listened to the truth. More importantly, she was open to the truth. And she's an young girl. She is. And uh, she's doing a level 10 study in the <laughs> university. She is. So she has every reason to rationalize like those people in the crowd, which we are discussing. Yes. But she chose to be like these two blind people. I heard about the truth. I know when, by renewing my mind with the Holy Spirit, according to the truth, I know what I can get. And she was ready to do. My friends said, be, be honest with you. When she chose to bless those people who have done bad things, they have done really very bad things. Yes. For confidentiality issues, it cannot be revealed. Very bad. God bless her. Yes. But when she chose to do it according to the word of God, according to Luke chapter 6, verse number 28, and then when the Holy Spirit revealed that she has this problem, and through the scripture again, we went to the scripture. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 2 and 3. And the same yes. way today, the same word of God of Genesis chapter 2, verse number 3, 2 and 3 can also be used for people with unwanted immature cells in their body as well. well because uh, it is also invading other not needed. Well, well, so it is unorganized. Brother Amal, how would you uh, use that prayer, Genesis 1, 2 and 3? In this case, you used it for endometriosis. How would you use it for, okay, how would you use it for endometriosis, Genesis 1, 2 and 3? So, sir, you are, you, are a do, you are a GP. And endometriosis, the cells which is normally found in the uterus have invaded the fallopian tube and the ovaries. Am I right? Yes. Very simple. So, it was chaotic. Yeah. The nature of those cells have brought chaos, unorderliness, and not the proper formation of cells, the epithelial cells inside lining those organs. Mm. So it is un unorganized. It is a chaotic in nature. Mm. They are not normal. There were darkness there. Can you use it for cancerous tumors? Or That's where I was selling now. You can use it for people with unwanted immature <laughs> cells in their body without using the name. So how would you use that? I guess, Brother Amal, how would you put that into a prayer? Use Genesis 1, and 1, verse 2 and 3. How would you put it into a prayer for either endometriosis or cancer or a tu benign tumor or what have you? Amal, you gave Rosie a prayer that I wrote out, if you want me to say it. That would Finally. be fun. Go ahead, please. Yeah? Okay. So... In the name and authority of, sorry, in the name and authority given to me in the precious name of Jesus, I command the spirit of endometriosis and its curse is completely uprooted from me and cast into the sea in Jesus' name. Jesus, I thank you for doing it, my Lord. You spirit of endometriosis and its curse, I rebuke you and I curse you as Jesus cursed the fig tree. Get out of me in Jesus' name. You have no permission to come back to me anymore in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm completely set free. Father, as this miracle is happening through the power of the Holy Spirit, as written in Romans 4, 17, my womb is completely recreated, regenerated and realigned. Angels, as written in Hebrews 1, 14, I am the heir of salvation. So I command you, angels, to take away the diseased cells, parts of my womb, and to replace it with a brand new one in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Michelle, I hope you don't Amen. mind. That was beautiful. That, Thank that, you. That was quite comprehensive, Michelle. Could you please 
repeat that again, please? Okay. Can I do one thing as the live is going on to cut short it? Um, Michelle, would you mind be able to type it in the column, you know, as we were oh, talking? Oh, yes, that's, I was just, yeah, I was so just going to say, to type it, it would be great. Okay. That'd be all right, Michelle? I'll start working on that. <laughs> Please, take so I'll time. give that homework so that I can pass on to somebody else. Yes. Is that okay? Yes. Thank you. And can you put it into the WhatsApp group, Amal? Oh, sure, yeah, of course. I sure. can type it up and send it on to you, Amal. But can yeah. I just say, just in relation to Genesis 1, uh, 2 and 3, it speaks about the darkness and the light. So when you sit, said this prayer to my for my daughter to say every day, as you rebuked the spirit of endometriosis I had an image at the same time of like a black veil or a black um, like a tissue or a black veil um, leaving my daughter and been blown away in the wind and was replaced with a ball of light in her tummy where her womb is the so beauty of this is um, um, of this uh, is, uh, Michelle is as we were speaking some some symptoms were there with your daughter, which she couldn't experience immediately. Yes. Immediately. That's right. There was a pull in her groin and there was some um, heaviness in her lower abdomen. The Holy Spirit worked in, worked in such a way when the word remained still in both of them, it clicked off like this. That's right. That's right. But, but the very next day, the little fellow tried to input the seed of fear. That's right, he did. And uh, henceforth, she was able to say that. The very next day, enemy put more pain, more pain. Yes. So this is another testimony I would like to share with everyone. Whenever the following day or the following few weeks, if you have more pain, it is a symptom that the healing has already taken place and the enemy wants you to put the seed of doubt in your heart and speak something negative. So please, when the symptoms got worsened, that means you are winning in the spiritual realm and the healing has been completed in the spiritual realm. Only thing I need to remind still. Is a lot? Yes. Sometimes things can get worse before they get better. Just to, just to see, as you say, plant the seed of doubt. Praise God. Praise God.